really what this church is all about. So make sure you bring non-perishables. We are going to come up with like a list of some ideas for things to bring, but just think of like your canned goods, pasta, that kind of thing. But we will come up with a list as well. Uh, Good Friday. So I can't believe we are almost at this time already that we're announcing it. So Good Friday, we're heading to Red Door Church, which is Neil and Eve's son's, what does he do there? Associate pastor of the church. So it's awesome church and they do an awesome thing. So it's like a Good Friday walkthrough for a 10 a.m. time slot. It's a deep and intimate walk, it says. So it's going to be awesome. There's 50 spots available, but we'll see how we go because looking around, we've got more than 50 people here, but we want everyone to be able to go. So make sure you let us know if you would like to um, be a part of that because we're going to go together as a church, which means there won't be a service here because we're all going for Good Friday to Red Door Church. So let us know so we can book your spot and we'll work out like carpools if you need lifts, things like that. So we're getting on to that quickly so that we can be super organised. Lent. This you are going to hear a lot more about. Pastor Lisa is going to get up and speak about it, but we have a calendar that we're going to give out, but that's going to be later on in the service so that Pastor Lisa can speak about and explain about the vision surrounding that. So look forward to that. We have a guest speaker next week, Pastor Cherry Schroeder from Hepburn Heights. She is like family. She's been in this church many times, but she is absolutely phenomenal. So make sure you come along next week for that. Uh, Love Langford Dinners. We are back on the 27th of Feb. So put that in your diary now. 27th of Feb from 5 to 6.30. So this is our community dinner. If you're visiting, we do this every fortnight in the school term. We just do a meal and some dessert and we all sit down like a family and have that. So it's awesome. Make sure you come along. If you want to volunteer, always looking for volunteers. See Pastor Lisa. Uh, Church lunch. People are so used to the church lunch that people brought in food the other week when it wasn't a church lunch, but I love that. I love that you guys are so enthusiastic and love it. It wasn't on, however, but it will be back on the 25th of Feb. So we just come together. As you can see, we like eating in this church and we just have a meal together and just spend time together because we really believe in the community of this church. So make sure you put that in your calendar as well, 25th of Feb. Kids Church, you've been so patient. There's so many kids and babies and everything back there. You are free to go, so see us later. I do have some more announcements, so you're all not free to turn your attention just yet. We've just got a few added announcements. One of them is country ministry. So Pastor Paul and Pastor Caroline are our country ministry pastors, and they are going to Wajen, I believe, next week. Next, sorry, Sunday week, in a week. So if you would like to tag along or help out in any way make sure you see pastor paul up the back there he always loves people coming along with him and then finally young adults we've got so much going on there's a lot of announcements so young adults there is a big c3 combined event coming up on the 24th of february it's like a mini day conference it's from 12 p.m to 9 p.m it's 30 dollars, but you get lunch provided for that as well. Um, So if you are interested, if you are a young adult or you think you might be a young adult, (laughs) you might not be me, I think you are, make sure, (laughs) Paul's putting her hand up, I don't think so, I think that time has passed. Uh, If I'm not a young adult. Uh, So make sure you see Cody, is Cody here? Or Pastor Lisa and Pastor Elton and they'll give you more information. Oh, he is here, he's over there. Hey Cody. Oh, you're right on my peripheral. Cody is here, so don't see Lisa. She's got enough people seeing her. Go see Cody over there. All right, that is all from me. I hope you got all that. I'm sure we'll come out with a calendar because there's a lot going on in church, which is fantastic. We love having things going on. But why don't we just take a few minutes before we welcome Pastor Lisa up here.
Good morning, everybody. Would you like to take your seats? Oh, you guys went quiet really quickly. You don't have to stay so quiet. All right. You guys can talk a little bit while I set myself up. Welcome to C3 Langford, everyone. Okay, there's a few more white. There's another. That's the centre. Says C. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everybody. Morning. What a wonderful time of worship. It was. It was cranked. It was cranked. Um, welcome. Welcome to visitors. Welcome to people we haven't seen for a while. Welcome to everybody to C3 Church. We have Elton who's with the kids today, so we could hear a little bit of noise going on this morning. Um, I wanted to go over a little bit of what we spoke about last week, just for people who didn't hear it and some people who, go, who, who went home and went, oh, what was that? And I did actually have a few people ask me the attributes of the Holy Spirit that we spoke about, so I did bring it back today. But the year... Am I really loud? Okay. Okay. I feel, I feel loud. The, the year that we're going ahead with is walking so close to God, right? So we spoke about Enoch. So in Genesis 5.24, it says that Enoch walked so close with God that he was no more, right? That God just took him there, for he was not. And then other versions, for he was no more. And in Hebrews, it talks about he was a faithful man that pleased God. He was a man of faith that walked so close to God, he pleased God. And this was probably probably about a year ago that this really stood out to me. And I didn't know that it would be 
entering for 2024, right? So that's how the Holy Spirit, a little bit of how the Holy Spirit can actually speak to you when you're, when you're trying to hear him or when you're asking to hear him or when you're in tune to hear him, he speaks to you. And you don't actually know what it's for, but he highlights something to you. This was highlighted to me. What made Enoch so close to God that then he just didn't even have a death day? He was just no more. Then we're going through through the year, we're going to be going through different people that walk so close to God. To see that there, there were people that were, uh, they weren't perfect people. They were flawed people. They didn't come across perfect. They did so many different things, but they walked so close to God. They were known to walk so close to God. So we're going to unpack these people throughout the year. So you can actually go, you know what, I might have related to that a little bit. I might relate to that a little bit because we can actually just read the Bible as a, uh, it could be a story. We can call them characters. We can read the Bible and not actually go, Holy Spirit, give me the understanding to know what the, what the Bible is actually saying, to have this revelation to understand what the Bible is actually saying to us. And without the Holy Spirit, we can't have that revelation. Without the Holy Spirit speaking to us, we don't know what the Bible's saying. We said it last week. We're actually just reading words. And we can read it back to front, and we can read it in any order we want to. We can read it however we want to, over and over again. But unless the Holy Spirit speaks to you, all you're doing is reading words. And all you're going to do is talk, to, talk about the Bible like a, uh, like a fictional character. Because you're not relating because the Holy Spirit's actually not giving you this revelation of what this is actually meaning and what it's meaning for your life. So I could read this scripture over and over again throughout how many years? Because how many could I say, even here, would say I've read Genesis over and over and over and over again? Because you always want to start, right? You always want to start. So we've read this over and over and over and over again. But Holy Spirit, what are you actually saying to me when I read a scripture and then this sticks out? And I didn't know, well, one, I didn't know that we'd be standing here in all the transition stuff that happened in 2024. But then two, I don't know that that's the word for 2024, but it stood out to me. So we're going to be journeying. How does the Holy Spirit talk to you? How does the Holy Spirit actually stand this out to you when you're reading the scripture? So that's sort of what our year is. And we're going to be going into Lent, which starts um, Wednesday. The 14th. So we're going to break that down. And also, like we said, we're going Good Friday. We're going to go to the Red Door Walk. So it's a walk through. Uh, some people, obviously the family, but some other people have been through it and say it's actually really amazing. I know the school, my kids' school went to it and they said it was amazing. So we're going to have a dinner on the Thursday night. We're going to have the Last Supper together here. It's going to be set up. It's going to be, uh, I really think it's going to be beautiful. So we're going to come together for dinner on the Thursday night, and then on the Friday morning, we're all going to trek down to the walk, um, yeah, to, to Red Door. Anyway, let me pray for this message. Thank you, Father. We just thank you, God, that you speak to us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that these are not just words, Father, but that they're your words, God, and that they plant on every heart, Father, to hear your voice, not my voice, Father, but your voice in what you're saying. May you make... Uh, room, God, to speak to each person. And may we make room for you to be able to speak to us, Father. So I just thank you, Lord, that this is all of you and your words and your transforming power and encountering just happens to each and every heart that's here and that's watching online in the name of Jesus. Amen. So last week we spoke about Ephesians 2.22, which is also the word from last year. In him you were also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Why is the Spirit building us up together? Because it actually says we are being built up together. So this could be an individual walk for you. Why is it saying we're being built up together? So I could stand up here. There's a lot that God's, I feel that God's given me for future, right? And I could come up here and go, we're going to be doing this, and we're going to be doing this, and we're going to be doing this. And what's going to happen is some of you are going to go, that's too overwhelming, some of you are going to go, I'm really excited, I want to jump on board. Some of you are going to go, we've been there, done that. Some of you are going to, it's all going to come out of either experiences, it's all going to come out of our feelings, it's all going to come out of our past, it's all going to come out of where we are at right now. This is the reason why we need to be built up together in the Spirit. Because when we're built up together in the Spirit, on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ, and that's where all building this wall up in the spirit, and he's building us all individually and together. When, the, when God says, I want you to do this, it does not matter. 
what we've been through, what we feel, what we've gone through, we join together and we go, we're built up in the spirit, we're doing this. It's not my words, it's not me standing up going, I think we're going to do this, this and this and this and this and just don't be tired and don't go weary and, you know, find God. That's not how we're built up in the spirit. Being built up in the spirit is because the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you and you need to activate that that's living on the inside of you. Then together we're being built up as a spirit. That's why we're being built up together in the spirit. Because he's building us individually because we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. But he's building us together because together we're being built as the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is why. Because he's got so much that he wants us to do. Not just sitting here. So this is a year of going, who is he? Who is he for me? How does he speak to me? What is he saying to me? This is what we're doing together. And why he's building us up together. There can be no life without the life giver. And the Holy Spirit is the life giver. There's no understanding without the spirit of truth. There's no fellowship without unity in the spirit and no Christ-likeness of character apart from his fruit. So we can't go, I need to be like Jesus Christ without the Holy Spirit being activated on the inside of us because it's not a bunch of works. It's not a bunch of doings. It's not what we say. It's none of that. It's activating the Holy Spirit so that's on the inside of us. When we say less of us and more of God, that's because the Holy Spirit's on the inside of us. Less of us and more of God, it means whatever I'm feeling It doesn't really compute. It doesn't come out of my mouth because what is the Holy Spirit saying out of me? Just like when a body has no breath and it's dead, the church is dead without the activation of the Holy Spirit. We can all come here every Sunday and nothing. And we can all bicker at each other, not say hello to each other, say hello to each other, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's dead without the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is activated on the inside of us. We can sing a bunch of songs up here which is amazing, which is anointed, which ushers in the presence, even though the presence is already here, and it's making room. But if we come in and we have not activated the Holy Spirit in us, what revelation do you get? You're singing a bunch of words. All right, so I'm going to bring this up. If you all missed it last week, we're going to go through it again this week. The Holy Spirit, the friend we all want and need. You can all see it? Actively works in our in our lies, Miss lies, by making known the presence of Jesus. He's a person, making us more like Jesus, helps us to understand the Bible, calls us to work, empowers us for service, helps us pray, intercedes for us, guides us, gives us spiritual gifts, counsels us, comforts us, convicts us, calls out to us, hears us, teaches all things, reveals to us, appoints us, loves us, helps us to love others, grieves us, creates, performs works, wants to be your friend, has a mind, has knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's a friend we want, but also a friend we need. We need that sort of friend. So if you don't have it and you want it, take a photo of that. But like last week when we were talking about the lame beggar that had legs, but they didn't work, and he was asking for alms, he was asking for money, silver, gold, whatever he was asking for, But what he actually needed was the Holy Spirit, the power of God to activate his legs to walk. Something he already had, but he was asking for something else to make him content. He was was asking for something else to satisfy. And I wonder if any of us are sitting at that temple gate going, I'm asking God for this, but what I really need is the activation of the Holy Spirit and the power on the inside of me so I can walk. I wonder if any of us are going, what is it that we're asking God for? But what we really need is him to act, be activated on the inside of us. Because when he's activated on the inside of us and he says he intercedes for us, he actually knows what he's praying for us. What we don't even know what we need, he knows what we need. So we need to activate, like the legs, instead of being a lame Christian that can't move because we haven't activated the power that's already on the inside of us. He already had legs. The power of God activated these legs. Get up and walk, and he walked. What's in the inside of us is the Holy Spirit already. So we're not asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's all fullness already in you. You already have the full, the, the, the fullness of the Holy Spirit is already inside of you. What you need to do is practice to activate it to walk with. That's what you need to do. We need to activate it. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. It says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. Seems like such a simple verse. 
right? We can just say it to anybody. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, we already have the grace of Jesus Christ, right? The undeserving grace because we're saved. That's what he did on the cross. That was undeserving grace. Then the love of God is the agape love of God. It's his whole being. That's who he is. He can't help but being love, right? It's unconditional. It's unchanging. That's his love. So we'll accept these two. Grace of Jesus Christ, he saved me. I'm going to heaven. I'm saved. The love of God, we're so thankful and so grateful that that's never changing no matter what we do. Then how's the fellowship with the Holy Spirit going with you? Because it actually comes in the same verse, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So, well, I keep practicing to say this word. Um, koinonia, right? So it's a Greek word meaning fellowship. When you break that down, it means companionship, communication, intimacy, sharing together, joint partnership, and close mutual association. So read those again because you've got it up on the screen. Companionship, communication, intimacy, sharing together, joint partnership, close mutual association. So everyone knows that, uh, well, Elton was up here a couple of weeks ago, made us sound so feral about what we were doing on the streets in Langford. But, (laughs) But we were teens and we did walk the streets a lot. But the thing with Elton and I was we weren't childhood sweethearts. We weren't together in high school, although, and he's not here so I can say this, he did used to follow me on the bus home when I was 13, right? He used to say he was going to a friend's house, so he'd argue if he was sitting here, but he did. And then he used to tell me to meet him down the park. So I used to, and watch him play basketball, and it's Elton, and he's a few years older, and he was very cool, and I think Elton liked playing the field with multiple, but anyway, I was down the park, and then... My mum would catch me down at the park. Oh, did I get busted? So I, an Italian family, it was like Elton tried to call, my dad hung up on him. I wasn't allowed to have boys calling, so I had to sneak down the park if I wanted to see Elton, but we weren't together, right? We were just like liked each other, but then, you know, you go off in life and you, you're always sort of friends. My mum has chased Elton down the pathway with a dog. Um, <laughs> I told you before, she has shown up to his uh, nightclub to have a few words with him. So this is as we go on in age. So it never ended, right? (laughs) But we always seemed to come together. We were like best friends. Like, you know, we weren't living a Christian life, so you can put all the rest together. But we had different partners, different lives, whatever, but we would always come together, right? We, I went to my mum and I was like early early to mid-twenties, but early twenties, and I just said, you know, I think it's Elton. Now, after all these years of my mum chasing Elton, of my mum hanging up on Elton, of my mum going to the nightclub at 3 a.m. to Elton, she's like, can't you just leave that boy alone? (laughs) And I remember exactly in the kitchen where we were standing when she said it to me. And no, no, obviously I couldn't. Um, And now, after how many years later, When you think of me, you think of Elton. When you think of Elton, you think of me. We have been friends for 30 odd years, can't figure the maths out right now, I don't want to either, but we've been, we've always come back to each other and I can actually say through all our lives and everything, and you can imagine, you can try to fill in the dots if if you can, you probably couldn't. We did not decide to come together when everything was good. When we got together, we went through a lot of ups and downs, a lot of fails, a lot of stuff. And that's the relationship the Holy Spirit is saying, I want you so close to me. Not when your ducks are in a row, not when you say, I've got everything sorted out. And then you say, now I want to walk with you, Holy Spirit. No. He goes, I want to be in mutual association with you. I want to be in joint partnership with you. We went dressed to a a party one year as Bonnie and Clyde. It made sense because you're in this partnership together. You've done so much life together. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants for us. 
and for you. I want to do so much life together. In the distant times, I want to do this together. In the failures, I want to do this together. When you don't really talk to me, I want to do this together. That's what he wants from us. In Galatians in Galatians 5.17, it says, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So in other words, when you're walking so close to the Spirit, it's not so easy that you want to fall into temptation because you're walking so close with the Spirit. I don't turn around and go, okay, now we're married in this joint mutual relationship and I go, well, I'm going to go off and do my own thing. No, because we discuss it. We talk about it. We do this partnership together, this joint partnership. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants from us. When you're walking so closely with the Holy Spirit, that will be seen on you. Whoever you're talking to, that'll be seen on you. That'll be with you because he's with you and that's what comes out of you. So it's like in the, when the flesh, when you talk to me or you see me or you see Elton, you're sort of like, where's Elton? Where's Lisa? That's the same thing. When you're walking so close with the Holy Spirit, it's not going, oh, where's the Holy Spirit? Because he's living on the inside of you. But you're going, oh, I can see that you're walking with the Holy Spirit. Because everything that you're actually doing is like Jesus. Because that's what we're trying to do. That's what being built up in the Spirit individually and together is. There's no other way around it. So it says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. Communion, partner, partnership, intimacy. So fellowship, it means friendship. It means sharing life together keeping one another informed. We see throughout the Bible where the Holy Spirit said, go this way, don't go that way. That's guidance. What is he saying to you about whatever you're facing right now? Go this way, don't go that way. Go this way, don't go that way. Or do we just consult after? Well, I've done this, can you bless it? This is what I want to do, can you bless it now? And it's sort of like going, oh, well, God, you know, I love you anyway, so you're going to bless it anyway. No, what is he saying to you? in your situation. He's telling you to go somewhere. He's telling you not to go somewhere. That's what we see as evidence in the Bible. Don't go to this place. I want you to go here instead. They listen. Partnership. In 1 Corinthians 3, 9, not the whole verse, but part of the beginning part, it says we are laborers together with God. So it's like your partnership with him, right? We're laborers. We work together. So for me, he runs this church. For me, he's like the CEO. So I'll go, okay, what is it that you want to talk about? What is it that you want to say? What is it that you want to do this year? What is it? That's a partnership. That's a working relationship. We're laborers with the Lord together. The Holy Spirit is a person. So you're talking to him every day. You're doing this life with him every day. So how are we going to do this? So now I'm going, I'm going to put my glasses. I did bring my glasses. Good job. All right. We're going to read Isaiah 58, the fast. So we've gone through this as a church before when it's a fast, but we're doing Lent. So let me read this now. Is it not the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of the wickedness, of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? And when you see the naked to cover him and not to, abide, uh, not to hide yourself from your own flesh, then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteous shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be the rear guard then you shall call and the Lord will answer, and you shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst and pointing of your finger and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out, are we going, are we going to 12? Yeah, sorry. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, and shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday, and the Lord will guide you continuously. And satisfy your desire in scorched places, and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. I just want to say that part again, and the Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your desire in scorched places, and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail." 
and your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach and restorer of streets to dwell in. An amazing verse, right? Now, we're going to do this. I'm going to go through... I'm going to go through practically what we're going to do for Lent. Once I explain it, then we'll give them a thank you, Sheila. So we're going to be giving, fasting, and prayer. That's what the true fast is, right? Talks about uh, clothing the homeless and feeding the poor and all that sort of stuff. So it's the giving, and it's the prayer, and it's the fasting. So to start off with, there's fasting sheets at the... Sheila's going to hand them out, but there's fasting sheets that go through different ways of fasting. It says no food and no water for the normal fast, and absolute fast is no food or water. This is a 40-day fast, so I probably wouldn't say, okay, that's what I'm going to do. But you can actually change the fast through the 40 days. That's no problem. There's the Daniel fast, which is the partial part of the partial fast, juice fast, corporate fast. Anyway, you go through this. The fasting is not a diet. The fasting, the idea of fasting is not that you lose weight. The idea of fasting is that in those moments that your stomach is going, I want this, or your mind's saying, I want this, or your, you know, the king's stomach's demanding that you have food, or you really feel like meat and you haven't had meat and you just had veggies and fruit, whatever. The idea is in that time that you're actually remembering why you're doing this and then you're praying. The whole idea is to go into prayer and to go into worship at the time that you're going, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, this is why I'm doing this, and you on your knees, however you are, in your car, wherever you are, but you're reminded to pray. This is not a diet, so I'm not going to go too much on the fast. This is really just for you guys to um, have at home and decide what fast you're doing. So we're going to choose our fast. Now I'm going to go through these scriptures, not the scripture, I'm going to go through every scripture for 40 days, (laughs) I'm going to go through what this is. So in this, if you've got it in front of you or you're sharing, I cannot see it, but anyway, so you're going to choose your fast, do it prior, then you've got Ash Wednesday, right? So Ash Wednesday, then it's got each day, now you don't have to go, this is exactly what I need to do, do it. If you go, you know what, I might, instead of fasting this or doing this, I might do this instead, this is just a guideline. Instead of us going, for 40 days we're going to do Lent, this is really going, for 40 days it gives you something to pray for, it gives you something to give to, it gives you something to fast of, like as in the socials or the screens, because your food fast is really what you guys are doing. But if you go, you know what, I really want to do something else on this day, I want to go and pay it forward and buy somebody a coffee, a random person, go to that. It doesn't have to be exactly what's on here. Just so you're knowing that it's prayer that you're focusing on, it's getting closer to God. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Who is the Holy Spirit laid on your heart to give to, to donate to, to do whatever to? That's your giving alms. That's what's in Isaiah 58 as a part of... The the true fast, you're giving. So a part of this is you're giving to something, you're showing some kindness to someone. So that's what this is. So you're going to go through that. So I want to really just explain a little bit on, I guess, an example. Many of you here will know how to engage the Holy Spirit, how to ask the Holy Spirit if you're reading the Word or if you're praying or whatever you're doing. But I just, I wanted to give a couple, a couple of, of examples. So the Enoch, for example. It stands out to me. Like I said, we've all gone through Genesis with good intentions a million and one times, probably more than we've gone through any other book in the Bible because we've all wanted to start there, right? But then at one point, this sticks out to me. So we're engaging our spirit. So there is a scripture on every single day. Holy Spirit, what is standing out to me? Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to me? And it could be a scripture that you know, but there's a word that sticks out to you. There's something that sticks out to you, and it may not even be for now, but then you go, okay, let me explore this. What is it, Holy Spirit, that you're actually saying to me? What are you speaking to me? What is it that you want me to do? And another example is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We can read that so many times and say, may the grace of Jesus Christ and may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit or the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. How many times can we actually say that to people and not think much of it? But what stood out to me was fellowship. So then what stood out to me was to go, okay, what does fellowship fellowship actually mean? So then we go into, oh, it's koinonia. And then, oh, that means 
mutual association. That means joint partnership. That means communion. That means he wants to be my friend. How am I stewarding the Holy Spirit, that he's actually my friend, that I'm in joint partnership with him. So that is a way that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Something will stand out to you. And so what will stand out to you in these scriptures? He wants to partner with you. So the 14th is Ash Wednesday. And it's the scripture is Joel 2, 12 to 13. So this is an example. Talks about rendering your heart and not your garments, right? It goes through all this stuff, but it talks about rendering your heart and not your, and not your garments. So in the old days, when they're mourning or grieving the sin that they've done, they've ripped their clothes. So today, we might be uh, very, so we could be surface on the forgiveness of our sins, right? We could go, I really, you know, God, I'm so sorry for doing that. Or I could be in person going, you can see that I'm really repenting of what I'm actually done or what I've actually gone through. And then behind closed doors, it actually doesn't mean anything. So God's saying, in that, render your heart. So he wants your heart to be broken over your sin. He wants your heart to be broken and mourning your heart to mourn the sin that you've done. That's what he wants. And Ash Wednesday is, is about repentance. It's about God's holiness and about our sinful nature. So he's actually saying, render your heart. So that could be something that stands out to you in that scripture that you go, oh, do I actually render my heart? Does my heart break or is it just a head knowledge that you've done the wrong thing so then you're tearing your garments really because you actually know you've done wrong versus your heart breaking because you've done wrong because that's what he's after is your heart. So that's just an example of 40 days of your scripture, of the scriptures. I don't want it to be and I don't feel it to be this competition of if I've missed all these days, oh, I've got all these days to catch up on. And then you just miss the whole point of the Holy Spirit speaking to you. The whole idea of these 40 days is for God to speak to you. This is your walk. This is your uh, personal stuff. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. If you miss a day or two or whatever you do and you come back on the actual, it's got the dates on there for the calendar and you've got the actual date, just come back to the date. What is God saying to you on that particular date? What is there something that you can do for someone? What is there something that you're going to pray for? So we've got the different, you know, outside ministries, ministries, the world, all different things that we're actually praying for, and it just gives you a guidance. If you've got something else or someone else to pray for, please do it. This is not a religious thing for you to stick by. This is just something, a guidance for you to do these 40 days, and then we come to the Last Supper, then we come to Good Friday, and then we come to Easter. So that's sort of the, the I guess, the gist on, how, on breaking down how the Holy Spirit can speak to us in a practical and spiritual way. So it's a guidance thing that we're all going to do together. So this is the first thing that we're doing to bring us into the um, walking with God. How do we hear from God? How are we being built up together? How are we... So you're fasting. Again, you're fasting. There's lots of different fasts that you can do. You don't have to do it every day if you don't want to. Go with what you actually feel that God is saying to you. This is for you to engage the Holy Spirit in what he's saying to you, in what he wants you to do and how he wants you to do it. What you're fasting, if you've got medical conditions and you can't fast, don't. Fast things, if that's all you can do. So it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't detach you from the Holy Spirit. All right? So this is not a religious thing we're all doing. We're all doing it together, but do what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. This is about us being built up as one body because when we're built up as one body, we can come together as one body on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. That's our foundation. So our foundation right now being laid down for the year is we're going to do a prayer and a fast together for 40 days heading into Easter. And I think we've also got, yeah, we've got our devotions starting, which will go into different devotions. Watch our devotions. Like there's so many things that the church provides to try and get you to hear the Holy Spirit, to try and get you to engage in the Holy Spirit. Don't just come to church for the sake of a Sunday morning because what a waste of time because you could be definitely at the beach at this sort of weather on a Sunday like this. Don't just come to church just because it's a habit. Come to church because the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. Come to church because you're engaging. Come to church because you want to witness Jesus. Come to church because you want to give a testimony. And when we're at the end of all of this, we're going to have testimonies of what people have experienced in this time, what people have done in this time, how the Holy Spirit has spoken to you in this time. Like that's what we're going to do at the end of these 40 days to really hear how the Holy Spirit's engaged in all of you. So don't just, it takes 66 days to make a habit. 
but a habit can build anywhere from 18. So some people can say 21 because that's where it built for them. Technically take 66. For 40 days, if you do this for 40 days, you have pretty much created a habit in reading the word and in praying. So when you stop doing that, you're going to go, something's missing. When you go to the gym for 40 days straight and you don't go one day, you're going to feel like you, uh, you've reversed everything you've done in those last 40 days. That's what you feel, right? So when you're doing prayer and speaking to God for 40 days, you've created a habit that when you stop doing it, you're going to go, oh, something's missing. What's missing is my engagement in the Holy Spirit. So what you're actually doing here is the lame man's legs. You're actually activating the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you. That's what you're doing. So then it's just scriptures to guide you. By all means, read more, read different, whatever. But the whole idea is to gain this repetition of reading the word, speaking to God, being in worship, praying, all of that sort of stuff. If you're someone who prays in the spirit, Please pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows what he's praying for you over what we do. If you don't know, pray for the gift. If that's what you're wanting, pray for it. The Holy Spirit says he intercedes for us. Now, an intercessory prayer is not really... It is you're praying for someone, but if you can imagine someone's situation and you're stepping into the situation, that's an intercessory prayer. You're praying on behalf of that person like it's happening to you. You're really then interceding. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. He steps into our situation and knows what he's praying for us. When you're praying for these people and these things that we have on this, actually don't just do a prayer because you're praying for, actually be an intercessor in these prayers. Step into these situations and go, okay, these people are sick. Let me stand into the situation and pray on behalf of the sick people. So you're exercising your prayer. You're exercising the spirit. You're exercising your reading the word and what God's saying to you and research it. Find a word. What is he saying? So I know it sounds all lots of stuff. I don't know what word to use. (laughs) But the communion of the Holy Spirit is for us. So it's really just to say to you, from today, we're just going to step up and activate our lame legs and stand up and walk. And we're going to activate what we haven't activated. And even if you have activated it and you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, go even more sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. How do we become so hypersensitive to the Holy Spirit that the voices of doubt, the voices of negativity, the voices that come against us and tell us that we can't do this and we can't do that and we shouldn't do this and we shouldn't do that is not louder than the voice of the Holy Spirit that says, I love you, I create you, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, because that voice is not louder. Everything else from the world is louder. We get disheartened from the world because it's louder. We watch the news and go, oh, God, where are you? That's louder. But when we engage the spirit, he says all these things. I create. I speak to you. I have secrets I want to tell you. I reveal to you. I walk with you. I carry you. I create. I speak. I call you out. I anoint you. I lead you. I guide you. I tell you where to go. When you have all of those things happening, that's louder than every other voice that's telling you no. That every other voice that tells you, you know what, I should have been here by now. I should have been doing this by now. This is not how I saw my life turn out. This is not how I saw the situation turn out. This is not how I thought the diagnosis would end. When all of that is louder, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you? So I want to get the band up and I just want to make room. (laughs) Wait, we'll sing make room. Um, <laughs> I just want to make, <laughs> make room for people to engage the Holy Spirit, to activate it today, to go, this is what I want. I want to hear your voice. I want to know who you are. I want to step out and activate my lame legs and stand up. So why, you can all stand. We'll be putting these scriptures up and this stuff up on uh, Instagram every day, Uh, just so you can engage. So if you're not friends on Instagram, come on Instagram. We'll see if we can do it on the story on Facebook too, but we're just going to engage it every day. 
Um, and if you do not have a Bible, please come and see me after service, if you do not have a Bible to go through all these scriptures with. But why your eyes are closed? If you haven't made that decision or you've walked away from Christ and you go, you know what, I'm ready to activate God who's living on the inside of me. I want to know how to house him. I want him to be activated. God, I want to know you. If you've walked away or never given your heart. Oh God, you know what, I have, but I don't even know him from everything that we've said. I didn't know that he's actually living on the inside of me. I didn't know the attributes of him and I want to give my heart to him. I want him to be my Lord, not just my saviour. If that's you and you've never given your heart or you've walked away, just raise your hand. No one's looking around. Father God, I just thank you for your instructions for us to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I thank you that you've orchestrated it, that you are living on the inside of us. And I pray, Lord, that for every single person that is here, that is watching, that says, I want to activate the Holy Spirit that's living on the inside of me, I pray, Father, that you encounter them and you touch them now in the name of Jesus. That you speak to them, Father. That you reveal secrets to them, God. That you become their friend, Lord. That you become their companionship, God. That they're in communion with you. To the point, Lord, that when they don't speak to you for that moment, they actually see that something's missing in their life, that you become so a mutual association that they're so attached to you, Father, that each one of us, God, walks so close to you that we can see it on each other and other people can see it on us, Father, that we can be vessels and a witness of you, Jesus Christ, to every single person that we meet, every single person that we touch, every single person that you've orchestrated for us to encounter, Lord that we will show the love of Jesus because that's what's on the inside of us and that's the only way we can love each other is by knowing, is by revelation of the Holy Spirit. So I thank you, Father, that you are activated in each life, that you come alive in each life, that you feel afresh, Father, even though you've been there, Lord. And it says you're alive, Father, and you're a person, God, that we activate that on the inside of us, Father. May you activate our legs, Father, and may we walk with you, God, every single day. May you reveal to us things you want to say to us, Father. May you reveal to us future things that you want us to do and say, Father. May you reveal to us, God, who you are, Jesus. May you reveal to us your heart, God. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I just want to open this altar. If that's you and you're going, you know what? I just want to activate my legs. I just want to know who Christ is. I just want him to be to manifest through me. The altar's open. We'll come and pray with you. If you just want your time, you can have that as well. And I will make room for you. This is my surrender. This is my 
that's you and you want prayer this morning, why don't you come to the front? We're just going to keep this open for a bit. Yeah, I will make room for you, Jesus. Father God, we just exalt you, God. Come on. Be your ways and better. 
the ways of better life. God, would you teach us, Father God, your word in this Lent, Father God. Come on. Is your ways are better. Is your ways are better. God, would we experience you. God, would we know you more, Father God. God, Holy Spirit, would you come into our hearts so deeply, Father God. God, I pray for the next 40 days, Father God. I pray that you would be in it. That, God, we would know you so deeply. God, we just commit it to you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. God, would you come. God, would we be so diligent before you, God. And God, would you honour that, Father. God, out of anything out of this, Father, God, would you just open us up to that deep relationship with you, God. Come on. Because your ways are better. Yeah, your ways are better. 